There are five key financial statements. The balance sheet, income statement, other comprehensive income statement, statement of changes in equity, and the statement of cash flows. The balance sheet can be viewed as a snapshot of the firm's financial position. It consists of three elements. Assets, which are resources controlled by the firm. This includes cash that the firm is holding. Liabilities, which are amounts owed to creditors and lenders. And owner's equity, which is the owner's residual claim on the company's assets after deducting its liabilities. It's called the balance sheet because the amount of assets must always equal to the sum of liabilities and owner's equity. As mentioned, balance sheets are snapshots of a firm's financial situation. How do we explain the changes in the balance sheets from one period to another? This is explained by the rest of the statements. One important statement that performs this role is the income statement, sometimes known as the profit and loss statement. The income statement accounts for the net income of the firm for that period. The net income is basically revenue minus expenses plus other income. Revenues are inflows from delivering or producing goods, rendering services or other activities that constitute the firm's central operations. Expenses are outflows in the process of running these operations, depreciation of assets and incurrence of liabilities that decrease equity. Other income includes gains that may or may not arise in the ordinary course of business. The net income for the period accounts for part of the change in equity. Other comprehensive income also contributes to the change in equity. Do not confuse this with other income in the income statement. Other comprehensive income are gains and losses that are excluded from the income statement. Such items can include unrealized gains or losses on investments, that are classified as available for sale, foreign currency translation gains or losses, and pension plan gains or losses. The sum of net income and other comprehensive income is referred to as total comprehensive income. Firms can choose to report a combined statement of comprehensive income or as two separate statements. Another source of change in equity is shareholder transactions. For example, if dividend is paid out, this reduces equity. The net effect of total comprehensive income and shareholder transactions should account for the net change in equity for the period, assuming there are no minority interests. All these changes should be reported in the Statement of Changes in Equity. This statement consolidates the amounts and sources of changes in equity investors' investment in the firm over a period of time. As mentioned, one important asset that the company holds is cash, the statement of cash flows is one important statement that links the cash balance from one snapshot to the next. In essence, this statement is a disclosure of the sources and uses of cash. This helps creditors and investors to evaluate the company's liquidity, solvency and financial flexibility. The cash flow statement is segregated into three sections – operating, investing and financing cash flows. Operating cash flows include the cash effects of transactions that involve the normal business of the firm. Investing cash flows are those resulting from the purchase or sale of long-term assets such as property, equipment, subsidiaries or investment assets. Financing cash flows are those cash flows from activities related to obtaining or repaying capital to be used in the business. The sum of the three cash flows is the net cash flow for the period. When added up with the balance cash from the previous period, it should give us the balance cash in the balance sheet at the end of this period. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.